worship today. You are worshiping with Trinity United Methodist Church in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and we are glad that you have joined us today. A um, couple of announcements. In a couple of weeks, it will be Palm Sunday, and we always love having our Palm Sunday parade, but because we're going to meet online, we're going to have a virtual Palm Sunday parade. So we would love for you to uh, take your phone and videotape yourself uh, and your family, your pets, your neighbors, anybody who wants to join. Uh, grab a group of people and wave your palms and send us a video. If you don't have a palm, you can use a flower, you can use some leaves, you can use a tree branch. Uh, we have a very creative congregation, so you can wave anything that you want. You can wave your arms or wave your hands. Um, and Will is going to put all of those together into a virtual Palm Sunday parade for all of us to enjoy together. So um, turn your submissions into be the church roll tide at gmail.com, and we would love for you to be a part of that. We're going to begin our service today with a prayer that is also a psalm, Psalm 139. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you were there. If I make my bed in the depths, you were there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, we lift up to you all of our prayers as we pray to you in the words that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
During the season of Lent, our theme has been rocks or stones. And today we are going to talk about a rocky family situation. You may remember Abraham. He's the one that Christians and Jews and Muslims all claim as the founder of their faith. Well, Abraham married Sarah and had a son named Isaac. He also had a son named Ishmael by another wife. Isaac is the one that he tried to kill when he was a young boy, and Ishmael is the one he cast out along with his mother um, many years ago. Well, Isaac grew up and he married a woman named Rebecca, and together they had twin boys. Now the first son that was born, when he was born he was hairy and red, and so they called him Esau, which means red and hairy. The second son, who was born just a matter of seconds later, uh, when he was born he was holding on to his brother's foot as if to trip him up. So they named him Jacob, the, the trickster, or the one who will trip you up. Well, the boys grew up together and they could not be more different. Esau was an outdoors kind of guy. He liked to hunt and he liked to fish. He was probably his father's favorite. Jacob, on the other hand, uh, liked to stay inside the tent. He liked to read, and he was definitely his mother's favorite. Well, when Isaac was old, he lost his vision. His eyes grew dim, and he knew that the time of his death was near. And so he called for Esau, and he said to Esau, Son, I want you to get your quiver and your bow. I want you to hunt some wild game and prepare it just the way I like it and bring it to me because I am ready to give you my blessing. Now blessing was a big deal in biblical times because the oldest son, even if he was only older by a few seconds, inherited everything. He got his father's blessing. He got the property and the crops. He got the livestock. Um, he got all of the status. He got all of the power. And Isaac was ready to bestow that, uh, according to tradition, on his oldest son, Esau. Now, Rebecca overheard all of this, and so she sent for her son, Jacob, and she said to him, Jacob, listen, I want you to go and get two choice goats, and I'm going to prepare your father's favorite meal, and then I want you to go in there and pretend to be Esau and take the family's blessing. Well, Jacob said, Mom, you'll know it's not me. I, I, I don't smell like Esau. I'm not hairy like Esau. I don't want to get his curse instead of his blessing. And the mom said, listen, if there's a curse, let it be on me. Do what I ask you. And so Jacob did. Then Rebekah went and took Esau's clothes and gave them to Jacob to wear. And then she got some goat skin and put it on his hands and put a piece of goat skin on the smooth part of his neck. And Jacob went to his father, Isaac. Father, he said, here I am, I'm Esau. Here's your food prepared just the way you like it. So please sit up and give me your blessing. Well, Isaac said, son, that was really fast. How did you do that hunting so fast? And Jacob, pretending to be Esau, said, well, the Lord gave me success. And Isaac said, son, let me come and touch you. Your voice sounds like Jacob. And Jacob reached out his hand with a goatskin on it, and Isaac said, Well, you feel like Esau. Are you really Esau? And Jacob said, Yes. So Isaac ate his meal and drank the wine and uh, reached over to hug the neck of Jacob, and he smelled the clothes of Esau, and believing that Jacob was Esau, he blessed him. Well, when Esau found out, he was heartbroken. He said, Dad, don't you have a blessing for me? He was furious at Jacob. You know, family are the ones that can hurt you the most. Families are the ones that can make you the maddest. And so Esau said out loud, I'm going to mourn my dad, and then I am going to kill Jacob. Well, when Rebecca heard that, she called Jacob and she said, Jacob, you have to run away. You have to run, run away because your brother is going to kill you. Go to my brother, to your Uncle Laban's house, and stay there until things are better. So Jacob runs away. He runs away from his family. He runs away from his sin. He runs away from his lies. He runs away from the wrath of his brother. 
and he runs away from God because they believe that God was there with the land and with the people, that God lived there. And so he ran away from everything. We pick up the scripture here at Genesis chapter 28, beginning with verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for a night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and he laid down there. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching all the way to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. And he was afraid. And he said, How awesome is this place. There is, this is none other than the house of God. This is the gate to heaven. Well, this scripture reading isn't some fairy tale perfect family. It is the middle part of a story of a very messy family. Even families in the Bible have tension and drama. Jacob really thought he was running away from everything, and in that dream, he was surprised to find out that God was with him, despite his faults and his failings, even in that very, very messy time, that very difficult situation, God was with him. Jacob had totally betrayed his brother, but God was still with him. Now, it wasn't like things went on happily ever after, like, oh, you know, he messed up and God forgave him and now his life was going to be perfect. <laughs> no, it didn't work out like that at all. In fact, he went to stay with his uncle Laban, and on the way, he falls in love with Rachel, um, whom uh, is, I guess, his cousin because it's Uncle Laban's daughter. And Uncle Laban says, well, you can marry her, but you're going to have to work for me for seven years. And so Jacob does for seven years, and uh, they have the marriage, and at the last moment after he's married, he realizes that he has been tricked by his, his uncle. The trickster himself has been tricked, and instead of marrying his beloved Rachel, he has married Rachel's older sister, Leah. And in order for him to marry Rachel, Uncle Laban says that he's going to have to work for him again another seven years. Well, um, long whole story with that. Uh, but the relationship with Uncle Laban goes sideways, and again, Jacob finds himself running away. In the meantime, uh, one of his wives steals the idols of the family god, and Laban runs after uh, Jacob and his entourage, and uh, there's a confrontation there. This is a really troubling, confusing story with a lot of very messy, imperfect people. People who are complex and human there's no evil monster. There's no, oh, well, this is the good guy and this is the bad guy, or this is the person who's right and this is the person who's wrong, because they're all uh, this complicated mess of um, good and bad, of right and wrong. Families can be really messy. Are you in a messy family? You know, even the best families, the, the most functional families are complicated. And most of us have families that are not perfect. Maybe in your family you have gone past the point of reconciliation. Maybe you find yourself very far from home. Maybe you or somebody else in your family has made way too many mistakes. And there is a break that seems like it's never ever going to heal. Is God with you in the middle of that mess, right in the middle of the complicated, uh, not sure how this story is going to end place in your life? The Bible says that God was with Esau. Um, 
Esau's story, uh, not Esau, God was with Jacob. Jacob's story continues for many, many years. And years later, years later, he does return home to Esau with fear and trembling and with a lot of bribes because he's worried that his brother is still going to kill him. Um, because even after all these years, he knows the hurt and the pain that he has caused. And on the eve before he is going to see his brother again, he has another dream. And this time, there is an angel, a man that he wrestles with. They wrestle all night long. This epic battle. And this angel reaches down and touches his hip and wounds him in that battle. And when he wakes up, he says, this is a special place because I have seen God face to face and yet my life was spared. He knows that he has messed up. He knows that he has done wrong. And yet the grace comes and that God has allowed him to live. God has allowed him the opportunity of a chance with his brother. Jacob forever walks with a limp. He's not the same. The, the pain and the tragedy that uh, has been a part of his family shapes him in uh, all sorts of ways. And yet, the Bible assures us that God was with him. Where do you find yourself in this story? What character do you identify with the most? Maybe you identify with Esau, the one who has been wronged. Maybe you, you identify with Jacob, the one who has done wrong and has run away rather than face the consequences of your actions. Maybe you find yourself wanting so badly to reconcile but not really knowing if that's going to work out or not or if that's even possible. In both of these dream sequences, the grace in the story is that God assures Jacob that he is not alone, that God has not abandoned him despite his faults and failings, despite the complicated situation. Maybe you are in a complicated situation right now, maybe with your family, maybe with friends, maybe at work, Certainly, this COVID stuff has complicated our lives and the world, uh, has laid bare all sorts of difficulty and conflict um, that we're still trying to sort out. And yet, even in the midst of this very messy time, God is with us. So maybe we hang on to that this week. Amen.
Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, may God find you and may God bless you. Amen.